This is a reading from The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis, Chapter 13. How the devout soul should sincerely desire union with Christ in his sacrament. The disciple. Lord, who will grant me to find you alone, to open my whole heart to you, and to enjoy you as my soul desires, that none may henceforward despise me, nor any creature disturb or notice me, that you alone may speak to me and I to you, as a lover speaks to his beloved, and as friend to friend. Exodus chapter 33, verse 2. For this is my prayer and desire, that I may be wholly united to you, and withdraw my heart from all created things, that through holy communion and frequent offering of the Eucharist, I may come to delight in heavenly and eternal things more and more. O my Lord and God, when shall I be wholly united to and absorbed into you, and wholly unmindful of myself, you in me, and I in you. John chapter 17, verse 21. So grant us to abide in one forever. You are indeed my beloved, preferred before thousands. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10. In whom my soul delights to dwell all the days of my life. You are the giver of true peace, in whom is perfect peace and true rest, and outside of whom is toil and sorrow without end. You are the true and hidden God, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 33, whose dealings are not with the wicked, but with the humble and simple, Isaiah chapter uh, 45, verse 15. How sweet is your spirit, O Lord, who, who to show your graciousness to your children, refresh them with the most sweet bread that comes down from heaven, Wisdom chapter 16, verse 20. There is no nation, however great, whose gods dwell so near to it, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 7, as you, our God, who are present to all your faithful, to, to whom, for their daily comfort and elevation of their heart, you give yourself as food and delight. <coughs> what other people is so favored as the Christian people? Or what creature under heaven is so beloved as the devout soul into whom God enters, nourishing it with his glorious body? O oh, unspeakable grace, O oh, marvelous condescension, O boundless love bestowed on, man, on mankind alone, but what return can I make for the Lord? Psalm 116, verse 12. For all his grace and overflowing love, nothing that I can give will be more acceptable, acceptable to him than my whole heart, to be inwardly united to him in utter surrender. When my soul is perfectly united to God, my whole being will be filled with joy. Then will he say to me, If you will dwell with me, I will dwell with you. And I shall answer him, Lord, dwell with me, I pray, for I will glad remain with you. It is my sole desire that my heart be united to you. Chapter 14 On Ardent Desire for the Body of Christ Disciple Lord, how boundless is your goodness, which you reserve for those who love you. Psalm chapter 31, verse 21. When I think of some devout Christians who frequent your sacrament with the greatest devotion and love, I feel ashamed and confounded that I approach your altar and the table of Holy Communion with so tepid and cold a heart, that I remain so dry and lacking in love, that my heart remains unkindled in your presence. O God, neither am I so strongly drawn nor lovingly disposed as many devout folk, for these, out of their ardent desire for communion and heartfelt love for you, could not restrain their tears, but from the very depth of their souls longed both with heart and body for you. O God, the living fountain, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13, Psalm 42, verse 2, and Revelations chapter 7, verse 17. In no other way could they appease or satisfy their hunger but by receiving your body with all joy and eagerness of spirit. Oh, how true was their burning faith, in itself a true and evident token of your divine presence, for they truly know their Lord in the breaking of bread, whose hearts burn so ardently when Jesus walks with them. Alas, such devotion and affection, such unfeigned love and fervor, is seldom felt by me. O oh, good and kind Jesus, have mercy on me, and grant me your poor mendicant, at least sometimes, to feel a measure of this heartfelt desire of your love in sacred communion, that my faith may be strengthened, that my hope in your goodness may be fostered, and that love, once perfectly kindled, 
having tasted the bread of heaven, may never fail. Your mercy, O Lord, is boundless enough to grant me even this favor for which I, from which I long. And when it shall please you, I pray you of your grace and generosity to visit me with the spirit of fervor. For though I do not burn with so ardent a desire as those who are so supremely devoted to you, yet by your grace I do long to have that great and burning desire, and I beg and pray that I may have part with all your true lovers and be numbered in their holy company. Chapter 15 How Devotion is Won by Humility and Self-Denial Christ, you must seek this, the grace of devotion with earnestness. Ask for it with real desire. Wait for it with patience and trust. Receive it with thankfulness. Keep it with humility. Use it with diligence and commit to God the time and manner of this, seven, of this heavenly gift, of His heavenly gift. Above all, humble yourself when you feel little or no inner devotion, and do not be too depressed or discouraged, for God often grants in one short moment what He has withheld for a long time, and sometimes He grants in due time what He delayed to grant at your first request. Were grace always granted at once and to be had for the asking, the weakness of man could hardly support it. The grace of devotion must therefore be awaited for with firm hope and humble patience. When it is not granted, or when it is withdrawn, regard this as due to yourself and your own sinfulness. Sometimes it is a small matter that hinders or conceals grace, if indeed it may be termed a small thing, and not grave, that delays so great a good. But once you have removed this obstacle, whether small or great, and have perfectly overcome it, you shall have your desire. As soon as you shall yield yourself to God, and with all your heart, and seek nothing for your own will and pleasure, but place yourself with reserve at His disposal, you shall find yourself united to Him and at peace. Nothing will afford you more joy and satisfaction than the perfect fulfilling of God's will. Whoever, therefore, raises his intent to God with a pure heart and disengages himself from all inordinate love or hatred of any creature shall best be prepared to receive grace and be worthy of the gift of devotion. For our Lord bestows his blessings where he finds vessels empty to receive them. And the more completely a man renounces worldly things and the more perfectly he dies to self by the conquest of self, the sooner will grace be given." the more richly will it be infused, and the nearer to God will it raise the heart set free from the world. Such a person will overflow and wonder, and his heart will be enlarged within him. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 5. For the hand of the Lord is upon him, and he has placed himself wholly in his hand forever. Thus shall the man be blessed who seeks God with his whole heart. Psalm 119 verse 2 he has not received his soul in vain when he receives the sacred eucharist he merits the great grace of divine union for he does not look to his own devotion and comfort but beyond all such devotion and comfort he seeks the honor and glory of god chapter 16 how we should declare our needs to Christ and ask His grace. The disciple, most dear and loving Lord, whom I now desire to receive with all devotion, you know my weakness and my many needs, the countless sins and vices that afflict me, and how often I am discouraged, tempted, troubled, and defiled. I come to you for healing. I beg you to comfort and relieve me. I make my prayer to Him who knows all things. John chapter 21 verse 17 to whom my inmost thoughts lie concealed and who alone can perfectly comfort and aid me you know the graces i most need and how lacking i am in all virtues see lord i stand before you naked and poor begging for grace and imploring mercy appease the hunger of this your beggar warm my coldness by the fire of your love and lighten my blindness by the light of your presence turn for me all worldly things into bitterness, all grievous and harmful things into patience, and cause me to despise and put out of mind all base and material things. Raise my heart to you in heaven, and let me no longer be a wanderer on the face of the earth. Be my sole delight henceforward and forever, 
for you alone are my food and drink, my love and my joy, my delight and my supreme good. Oh, that you may set me wholly afire by your presence and change me into yourself, that I might be made one spirit with you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 By the grace of inward vision and by the fusion of ardent love, do not send me away hungry and thirsty, but deal with me in your mercy as you have dealt so marvelously with your saints. How wonderful it would be were I wholly on fire with you and dead to self. For you, O Lord, are the fire unquenchable. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13 That burns forever. You are the love that purifies the heart and lights the mind. Chapter 17 On Ardent Love and Eager Desire to Receive Christ The Disciple Dear Lord, I long to receive you with deepest devotion and ardent love, and with all the affection and favor of my heart. As many saints and holy persons have longed to receive you in communion, who were especially pleasing to you by the holiness of their lives, and were on fire with devotion. O my God, eternal love, my supreme good and eternal delight, I wish to receive you with the most eager devotion and deepest reverence that any of your saints have ever felt or could feel. Although I am not fit to enjoy such feelings of devotion as yet, as, the, as they yet I offer you all the love in my heart, as though I alone were moved by these most fitting and ardent longings. So, whatever a pious heart can conceive or desire, that I offer you with all, that I offer you with all reverence and love. I wish to withhold no part of myself, but freely and most gladly to make an offering to you of all that I am or have. O Lord my God, my Creator and Redeemer, I wish to receive you today with that affection, reverence, praise and honor, with that gratitude, worthiness and love, with that faith, hope and purity, with which your Most Holy Mother, the Glorious Virgin Mary, desired and received you, when she devoutly and humbly answered the angel who brought the joyful message of the mystery of the Incarnation, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to your word. Luke chapter 1, verse 38. And as your blessed herald John the Baptist, greatest among the saints, who was glad and leapt for joy, Luke chapter 1, verse 44, of the Holy Spirit, while yet in his mother's womb, and who when he saw, when he later saw Jesus walking among men, John chapter 1, verse 36, devoutly and lovingly humbled himself, saying, The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him is glad because of the bridegroom's voice. John chapter 3, verse 29. Like these, I too wish to be afire with great and holy desires, and to offer myself to you with all my heart. I also offer and present before you the praises, the glowing affections, the raptures, the supernatural revelations, and heavenly visions of all devout hearts, together with all the virtues and praises that are or ever shall be offered by all creatures in heaven or on earth. I plead them for myself and for all who have been commended to my prayers, that you may be worthily praised and glorified forever. Accept, O Lord my God, my vows and my desire to offer you infinite praise and boundless blessing, for these are your rightful due, by reason of your unspeakable greatness. Psalm 40 No, sorry, um, 150 150, verse 2. These I render and wish to render every day and every moment of time. I lovingly pray and entreat all the heavenly host to join with me and all the faithful in offering you praise and thanksgiving. Let all people, tribes and tongues, Revelations chapter 7, verse 9, praise and exalt your sweet and holy name with great joy and fervent devotion. And may all who reverently and devoutly celebrate your sublime sacrament and receive it with full faith, merit to obtain your grace and mercy, humbly interceding for me, a sinner. And when they shall have obtained the devotion they desire, and blissful union with yourself, and have left your sacred and heavenly table truly comforted and marvelously refreshed, let them, I pray, remember me, who am so poor. Chapter 18. How we should approach Christ's sacrament humbly. Submitting reason to holy faith. Christ, 
Beware of curious and, imp and unprofitable inquiry into the mysteries of this most holy sacrament, if you would avoid being plunged into the depths of doubt. For those who attempt to search into the majesty of God will be overwhelmed with its glory. James chapter 4, verse 7. God can do more than man is able to comprehend. Yet we may humbly and reverently search for truth, so, so long as the seeker is always willing to be taught and to follow the sound teachings of the fathers. Blessed is that simplicity which rejects obscure inquiry and advances along the sure and open road of God's commandments. Psalm 119, verse 130. Many have lost their devotion by attempting to pry into matters too high for them. It is faith and a holy life that are required of you, not a lofty intellect or knowledge of the profound mysteries of God, for if you cannot understand or grasp things that are beneath you, how will you comprehend those that are above you? Therefore submit yourself to God, and humble your reason to faith, and the light of knowledge shall be granted you in so far as it be profitable and necessary. Some are sorely tempted about faith and the sacraments, but this is due to the devil rather than to themselves. Do not be anxious. Do not fight your thoughts or attempt to answer any doubts that the devil suggests. Trust in God's words. Believe his saints and prophets, and the wicked enemy will flee from you. James chapter 4 verse 7. Often it is very profitable that the servant of God should experience such doubts, since the devil does not tempt unbelievers and sinners who are already his own, but he tempts and vexes the faithful and devout in every way he can. Go forward then with simple, undoubting faith, and come to this sacrament with humble reverence, confidently committing to Almighty God whatever you are not able to understand. God never deceives, but man is deceived whenever he puts too much trust in himself. God walks with the simple. Psalm 119, verse 130. Reveals himself to the humble, gives understanding to little ones, discloses his secrets to pure minds, and conceals his grace from the curious and conceited. Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. All reason and natural research must follow faith, but not proceed or encroach on it. For in this most holy and excellent sacrament, faith and love precede all else, working in ways unknowable to man. The eternal God, transcendent and infinite in power, works mightily and unsearchably. Job chapter 5 verse 9, both in heaven and earth, Psalm 135 verse 6, nor can there be any searching out of his wonders, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28, for were the works of God readily understandable by human reason, they would be neither wonderful nor unspeakable.